Today we'll be showing you how to configure BGP root reflectors on Juniper. So if we have a look at our lab here, this is actually remnants of a previous lab. We are building a series, how to build your first ISP. So this config between these two routers stayed exactly the same, except we deleted the BGP config between them. Then I've added these two routers here that will serve as a root reflectors. Then we've interlinked them on GE001 on both sides and the same on this side, root reflector two towards site B. And we have configured IP addresses on these links as well as ISIS. Now these routers form part of the whole ISIS network here. We haven't done any BGP config and that's exactly what we want to focus on now. I just want to give you a little bit of an overview. So your BGP client which would be site a router and site b router would connect to a bgp server which would be a root reflector one and a root reflector two they are interconnected using ge000 there's also a slash 3 ip address configured between them this interface also forms part of isis and we will also build a bgp neighbor across this link so why would you need a root reflector well, if you only have two routers like we did in the previous lab, it's not an issue. You can just build BGP sessions between them. It's easy to manage and very, very easy to set up. But the moment your network starts growing, you've got three, four, five, 30, 50 routers. Then the admin becomes a bit of a burden because you would need a full BGP mesh. So that means that you would need to set up BGP sessions between all of your routers. Now, what a root reflector does is your client would connect to a server and another client would connect to a server. These two would form part of the same BGP cluster, so the routes between them would be shared. But for instance, if we advertise a route from this router here, then this router would receive it, even though there's no BGP session between the two of them. That just makes large CAL networks a lot easier to manage because if you have 60 or 70 routers down here, it's just easier to build a BGP session to root reflectors. In our lab here, we'll have this site A router build a BGP session to root reflector one as well as to root reflector two. Even though there's no direct link between these two, this whole network forms part of ISIS and we are advertising the Lubeck addresses via ISIS. We build the BGP sessions on the Lubeck addresses. So that means that for this router to be able to communicate with the root reflector two, it would follow this path over here because the route is made available via ISIS. Even if that link has to fail, it would still be able to reach root reflector to via this path because this path is also ISIS enabled. I'm not gonna go through the whole config of our previous video. I'll link it so you can just uh, click on it on the top right hand corner of your screen right now. But we will just do a quick overview of the config and how we got here. All right, so this is a site router A. We just do a show display set no more. So here you can see we've got interface GE000. We've got a description uplink to router B. Then we have GE001, which is uplink to root reflector one with an IP address and GE002. So I named this one a route to be advertised. We are going to advertise this slash 24 route via BGP. Even though there's nothing connected on this interface, this interface is up and it's just easier to use as an example. Then we have our family INET address on the Lubeck as well as our ISO address. Then all these interfaces are part of ISIS. We have a router ID, which is just the local Lubeck IP address. And we have an autonomous system number, 65535. Now this is a private AS, and this is uniform across your whole IBGP network. I'm just gonna go through the rest of the device's config. I'm not gonna explain everything. So if you want to have a look at something, you can just go ahead and pause. This is site B router. Then this is the config for root reflector one. And finally, this is the config for root reflector two. So you might think that my IP addressing scheme is a little bit weird, but in our previous video, we started with 172.16.0.1 for router A and 172.16.0.2 for router B on the Lubeck addresses. So we just made 172.16.255 for root reflector one and 254 for root reflector two. Any additional root reflectors that we add in future videos, we'll just count down from here. Any other PE routers that we add will just be 
counting upwards from here. All right, so as you can see that there's no BGP config here. So what we'll do is we'll start first with the group config. We just go edit protocols BGP group and we're gonna give it a name. So I'm gonna give this one ibgp-servers. So the reason for that is the connection from this router, router A, would be towards a root reflector. So this means that we are gonna configure from router A towards a server. So for me, it's just a little bit easier to identify the group as IBGP servers. So first we're gonna set the type as internal. Then we are going to configure our neighbor. So in this case, it is 172.16.0.255 and 172.16.0.254. All right, and we're gonna say set local AS 65535. All right, and that's basically all you need for your BGP config, but I'm just gonna set a local address as well. Set local address, and I'm gonna use the Lubeck address here. So 172.16.0.1. So if we do a show, that's basically all you need for your BGP config for now. Right, we just do exactly the same on router B. So top edit protocols, BGP group, IBGP dash servers, set type internal, set neighbor, once again, 172.16.0.255 and 254, set local AS, 65535, set local address, 172.16.0.255. Two. Right, we can just do a show, make sure everything's correct, and we can go top and commit. So for the root reflectors, we're going to do exactly the same, except we're going to rename the group to IBGP dash clients. So top edit protocols BGP group IBGP dash clients. Remember, we are expecting client connections to come in via this group. Once again, set type internal set neighbor and here you're going to specify your 172.16.0.1 and 16.2 those are the Lubeck addresses of our PE routers or router A and router B and we are going to set local AS 65535 and set local address 172.16.0.255 all right, we're just going to commit that. All right, and now we just do exactly the same on root reflector two. All right, so now that we've done that, we can just do a show and we can do a commit. Now you can see that I actually made a typo here. My bad. So this will actually be a, another quick lesson. A very easy way to fix something like that is just use replace pattern. So you can just type in replace pattern IBG dash clients with IBGP dash clients. Let's see if it works. All right. So now if we do a show pipe compare, you can see that our group has been renamed correctly. All right. And we can do a commit. Now, the next thing you want to do is you want to see if your BGP between your clients and your servers actually come up. So we'll just go to site A router, run show BGP summary. And you can see that our BGP has been up for this neighbor for the last two seconds and on this neighbor for the last almost two minutes. Right, but you still haven't configured your BGP root reflectors. It's very easy to do once you are back in your IBGP clients stanza all you need to do is just set cluster and give it a unique address so for us we are going to use 1.1.1.1 right this is going to be unique across our network except for root reflector 2. you want to do exactly the same on root reflector 2 because it needs to know that it forms part of the same cluster so top edit protocols bgp group ibgp clients we're going to set cluster 1.1.1.1. All right, so now you have redundant root reflectors. So you can add more root reflectors. You don't need to stick to two. You can add three, four, five, six, just as long as the cluster ID is the same. And just remember that once you share the same cluster ID, those BGP root reflectors would be seen as the same cluster, hence 
the cluster ID being the same. Once you start expanding geographically, you can see this as a single pop or point of presence. Then you can set the additional root reflectors to different cluster IDs. So if you acquire a different pop in a different location, it will still form part of the same internal IBGP network, the same ISIS network, and you can just set those clusters to 2.2.2.2 for example. So now we need to make sure that our BGP root reflectors are working. So we can just do a run show BGP neighbor. And here you can see that this neighbor 172.16.0.1 has its state as established and you can see that it is a root reflector client. The same goes for 172.16.0.2. It says root reflector client. All right, let's do the same on this side. Run show BGP summary and the BGP is still up. So we just do a run show BGP neighbor to get more detail. So here you can see as well 172.16.0.1 is a root reflector client and the same goes for 172.16.0.2 is also a root reflector client. We are not done yet with our root reflector setup. We still need to set up BGP between these two routers and this is exactly where I said it might get a little bit confusing because here we will set up another IBGP session between root reflector 1 and root reflector 2. It's just so that they can share the routes between each other. So to set up the IBGP session between the two root reflectors, all we need to do is we can just uh, take the config from this router and just modify it a little bit just to make it a bit easier. So we go edit protocols, BGP, show pipe display set, and we will just uh, copy and paste this into a notepad and we'll just uh, rename it a little bit. So for this one, the local address would be 255 and the neighbor would be 254, right? And that's all you need to do. The name can stay the same. So we go yum and we can paste it. We can do a commit and we do the same for a root reflector too, except this one just changes around. All right, so we do that and we go top. The IBGP link between the two root reflectors is just uh, for you to be able to still share routes via BGP between these two root reflectors. All right, so we just do a run show BGP summary. Let's make sure everything's up and running. All right, so here we have our side router A, our side router B, and this is root reflector one. So we just do the same on this side. Run show BGP summary. And we've got the same side router A, side router B, and the other a root reflector. We'll just verify everything on all the routers. So run show BGP summary. You'll see that we have a BGP session to each of the root reflectors as well as on this side. Well, we should run show BGP summary. So if you're wondering why we have BGP sessions to each of these routers, even though we don't have direct connections between them, as I explained earlier, this uh, whole network here forms part of the same ISIS network and all these loopbacks are advertised via ISIS. Just to show an example, we'll go to site B and we'll just do a run show route. So here you can see that we have 172.16.0.254 via ISIS as well as 255 via ISIS. Right, so now we want to start advertising routes via BGP. We will come to router A first. So we'll go top edit policy options, policy statements. I'm just gonna name it direct dash export because I want to export some direct routes. If we just do a run show interface descriptions again, you'll see that the route I want to advertise is on GE002. So if we do a run show route, we'll check for GE002. It's this network here that I want to advertise and you can see that it is installed in the routing table. All right, so we are going to set term one from protocol direct because remember this is a direct route from protocol direct then set term one from root filter and we're going to specify the exact route here 192.168.10.0 slash 24 exact so this means that this route needs to be installed in the routing table exactly as as it is before it'll be accepted in our export policy. And then we'll just uh, complete this term one 
if I set term one, then accept, we'll have a set term reject, then reject. So this just means that no other routes can accidentally be advertised. So now if we do a show, you'll see that term one from protocol direct root filter 192.168.10.0 exact, then accept, then term reject, then reject. Right, so we can go ahead, top edit protocols PGP. Now we will define this as an export policy in our group. So edit group IBGP servers, set export, and we'll do direct export. We can go ahead and commit this. So now if we go to site B router, we should see that root run show root. And here you can see that we are learning 192.168.10.0 slash 24 via BGP. It shows us that we are learning it from 172.16.0.254, which is RR, uh, RR2, sorry, not RR1. But it is telling us that it needs to go to 10.10.10.1. So even though you have the BGP session towards the root reflector, it is not responsible for the actual routing of the traffic. It'll only tell this router where to send the traffic. It does not serve as a transit router, so traffic from this site B to site A will not traverse this link over here. This router over here will only tell it, oh, if you want to access site A, then you need to go over this interface here. And that's exactly what it's doing. You can see that it's saying that you need to send the traffic to 10.10.10.1 via GE000. And now for us to just get bi-directional communication, we are just going to do exactly the same on router B with regards to the export policy. So if we do go top edit, policy options, policy statement, direct export, we'll do exactly the same, show display set. We're gonna copy and paste that and just change it a little bit. So we'll go back into Notepad here. And this will just change to 20. All right, so we'll go back to our router, site B, copy and paste. Now you wanna make sure that this is the, the correct one. If we do a run show interfaces descriptions, we'll see route to be advertised is on GE002. And let's do a run show route. And the route we want to advertise is this route over here. All right, so top edit policy options. If we do a show, and this is the correct route that we want to export. So we go top edit protocols again, BGP, group IBGP, and we are going to set this as an export policy. Set export direct. Now we do a commit again. And now if we go back to site route A, we do a run show route. We should see that route being populated by BGP. There we go, 192.168.20.0 via BGP. It's saying that it's learning it as well from 0.254 and 0.255. And if we want to reach that network, we need to send traffic out via GE000. All right, so let's see if we can actually ping across. So from site A, I'm going to run ping 192.168.20.1, source 192.168.10.1. And there we go. All right, so I just wanted to show you if we do a run show route here, might have noticed that we received this route from two BGP peers, 172.16.0.254 and 255, and it is exactly the same on this side. I just did not select this one, but there are two routes being installed via BGP. The one with the asterisk or star sign, that is the one that is being preferred, the active route being installed into the routing table. And here you can see the same. Right, and that's it for setting up root reflectors. As you can see, it's definitely not that complex as long as you understand the concept. So we'll continue our how to set up your ISP in the next video where we'll be showing you how to set up MPLS. All right, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And as always, I hope to see you guys in the next one.